their hands. Imagine if somebody starts this video right now, the things that I do for YouTube. Hello, my friends. It's Ra. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to continue with our compassion and criminal justice series because we can all use a smile right now. We all can use some human compassion, especially in the criminal justice system right now. We are trying, we are begging governors and the president to express some compassionate releases to help slow the spread of this germ inside of prisons. So while we're doing that, while we're home, while we're anxious and stressed and depressed, I've been trying to share stories of compassion to help you guys smile. So here's my third installment. If you're interested in this correctional officer's techniques and how a prison wife and a correctional officer work together to help develop those techniques, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families. I am the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I'll pop a link to it right up there. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here. Frankly, the whole entire thing is very painful and it sucks. So what I do is use all of my years of experience and I pass along the tools and exercises that I've learned to help you make the best out of this hopefully one shot deal to get past the depression and to move forward and hopefully get through this and past this and live happily ever after. Please do me a huge favor and hit the thumbs up button. It helps me out so much. Also hit that little red subscribe button if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you don't miss uploads. I know notifications have been a little bit crazy lately. People are saying that they're not notified when my videos post. If you ring that little bell, it helps and you'll always be the first to know. You get a shot at the first comment, you get a shot at being one of the first thumbs ups and we have a lot of fun over here. Okay, so without wasting any more time or demanding anything more from you, let's get into this story. I have a friend that I've talked about in the past. Her name is Officer Trouble. She's a correctional officer down in Florida and we became friendly right here through YouTube and through Instagram. And in the past, I've shared some stories about how she created her trouble technique. I will post a link to that video up here and a story about how she handled when all of the inmates that she had out on work call because she works in a lower custody dorm type of setting for a women's facility in Florida. She had the women out in work call at a park or the beach or something, picking up trash, something like that. And the facility went on lockdown. So she was stuck with all these inmates outside of prison. It was like her first or second week there. And she created two amazing techniques and handled it in a way that was amazing. The women had so much respect for her and it was just incredible. She has so much compassion for her inmates and with all of her little techniques that I tell her all the time she needs to have officer trouble training school. I'm not kidding. So back around Christmas time, she was telling me about this technique that she had developed and she was calling it the starfish technique. What she did was when she was going through to shake down the dorm, because here's the thing, she has a job to do along with every other correctional officer. They have a job to do. Part of their job is shaking down cells or dorms, living spaces. If you guys don't have a loved one in prison or you're very new to this, what a shakedown is, is when officers go through living areas, they go through all of your stuff, all of your paperwork, all of your personal belongings, your clothing throughout your whole entire cell. They're looking for contraband, hidden things, things like food that's not supposed to be out of the chow hall. They're also looking for weapons and anything that you're not supposed to have. So this happens kind of frequently. It's not usually announced. So right around Christmas time, what Officer Trouble did was she had the women line up outside of the dorm and she had them stand in a starfish position. So arms extended up, feet extended, you know, shoulder width apart. So you look like a starfish, you look like a star. Do I need to explain that further? Probably not, right? Part of this shakedown was that she had to go through their hair. So she had to, you know, scramble through their hair and it left a lot of their hair, left a lot of them with their hair like a mess, you know, like out of control. Just think about it. Somebody's going like this to your hair. Now you're stuck like this, but their hands, imagine if somebody starts this video right now, I will not get mad at you if you take a screenshot. Don't don't. The things that I do for YouTube. Anyway, their hair is a mess like this. Their hands are like this and they're not allowed to fix it, to pat it down like I'm doing right now because yeah. Curly hair has a mind of its own. We call this my romaine. So she said when she gets to the end of the line of female 
prisoners that she was shaking down, looking through their hair. They're in starfish position. She said she looks back at them and they're all standing there with hair a mess. And she said she couldn't help but find the humor in this. She started laughing. I think she was laughing to herself, but she was asking me what I thought about this. And I said, well, think about it from their perspective. A lot of people who are incarcerated grew up in an underprivileged community. They might have been walking around town with holes in their shoes, with shoes that were years old, with clothes that were stained and dirty and hand-me-downs from people that they didn't even know. They're used to being the butt of everybody's jokes. It's mortifying, it's embarrassing, it takes a toll on your self-esteem. And even if you didn't grow up like that, when you go to prison, you are the butt of a lot of correctional officers' jokes. You're humiliated on the daily just because a lot of officers get kicks out of doing that. It's disgusting and it's dis disturbing. Not that Officer Trouble was doing this. I was just trying to give her perspective from these women's point of view. I said, so standing there with their hair a mess, they have to do it because they don't want to get in trouble. But there's just another thing, like they feel like an animal with matted hair that it can't even be fixed because they're not allowed to fix it. And they're mortified and they're embarrassed and they're humiliated. And once again, they're just a lowly prisoner that can't even fix their hair. So she said, oh my gosh, I never even thought about it like that. Now listen to how beautiful this woman is. She wasn't like, well, I'm the officer. I have to do this. They can't fix their hair. I have to make sure there's no contraband. She said to me, she thought about it and she said, do you think if I give them each 10 or 20 seconds to fix their hair before I move on to the next girl, that that would help? And I said, even if you gave them two seconds to pat down their hair and they had to put their hands right back up and then you moved on to the next one, that would mean so much to them. That shows so much compassion on your part. That's a woman to woman thing. Like, I got you, girl. Women are often, not even just women, Adam's like this too. We are vain creatures. We want to put our best feet forward. It's mortifying to stand there with your hair a mess and you're not allowed to fix it. And so what, you're just in prison. I know a lot of the female prison YouTubers talk about how they wore makeup and people always say to them, like, who cares, you're in jail. You still wanna feel good about yourself. You still wanna feel pretty. You're a woman and a lot of us as women value beauty. We value feeling pretty. So I just thought that was amazing. That was so compassionate. That was incredible of Officer Trouble to express that much compassion to these women. She also told me right now during this quarantine, she has this technique that she's having her inmates do called double trouble. So when she works the unit, she'll just stop and yell out double trouble. And when she does, that means the inmates have to run to a sink and they have to wash their hands for at least 20 seconds. And so that's a way, a fun way, that she has the girls staying more sanitary. She's trying to stop the spread of germs. She's making it fun for them. She asked me what I think. And I said, well, how did they respond? And she said, they love it. I said, then I love it. Because you are doing your part to keep them safe. You are doing your job. You're making it fun. But most importantly, there's so much respect between you guys that you make them feel like people again. You make them feel like human beings again. There is nothing in the Constitution, in any law book, correct me if I'm wrong, but nothing that I've ever heard or seen that says when you go to jail, you become less than human. You become a creature. You become disgusting. You should be treated without any respect. That's not what prison is about. Prison is about serving your time, paying your debt back to society, rehabilitating yourself, and leaving there a better person. It's not about being beat down on the daily. It's not about public humiliation. It's not about being a pawn in the game of a correctional officer. It's not about feeding their egos and giving them a power trip. So what I love so much about Officer Trouble is that she's there to work with her inmates. She genuinely cares about 
her girls, as she calls them, and she wants them to leave there better than they came. That doesn't mean that she doesn't inflict her authority when she needs to. That's her job. That's what she's paid for. She is paid to keep everybody there safe and secure. She's not abusing her power, but she's using her authority in a way that keeps everybody safe, secure, and in a way that she needs to. So I give so much props to her, especially in the Florida DOC, which is one of the worst of the worst of the worst. I remember when I started Strong Prison Wives and Families, a girl that came in to help me after my co-founder, I've told this story a hundred times, but my co-founder had to leave and go raise her baby who was born very premature and with a lot of medical issues. So I had another girl who helped me and her husband was in the panhandle of Florida. He was black, she was white, and they were treated horribly, horribly because of their interracial relationship, because down there they were living pre-Civil War. She would get words thrown at her. She would get insulted when she was leaving visit. She wound up at a point where she stopped going to visit for a long time because it wasn't safe for her to go. And through her, I learned so much about Florida DOC and how corrupt and how disgusting they treat their inmates down there. And so many of the DOCs and the BOP have corrupt people, but Florida is one of the worst. So I have so much respect for Officer Trouble for going against the grain. And I genuinely hope people see this video. Maybe people will reach out to her and she could share some of her tips with them. But for today's video, this is my compassion in criminal justice and officer trouble. I love you, girl. I love you. And I thank you for being so humble and trusting me and coming to me with these things and asking my opinion as somebody who has experience with the system for so long. That means so much to me and on behalf of all the prison wives and family members and everybody that has to deal with corrupt officers, I can't thank you enough for being your own person, for being strong enough to say, uh-uh, I'm not gonna operate like that. I'm gonna operate in a way that I feel is respectful of these people. In turn, I will get respect back. You can't force people to respect you. And when you lead from fear and you lead from a place that is flexing and it's over authoritative, that doesn't give you respect. That just makes people hate you. And they know that they have to do what you say begrudgingly because you have the power. But when you have respect, it's completely different. You can change lives that way. Do me a favor and leave some love for Officer Trouble in the comments below. If you have any thoughts or tips or tricks or words of encouragement for her, she so deserves it. I love you guys. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys.